Oh, I'm exhausted today. Sorry guys. Um, okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about the new amplifier, not amplifiers, that I'm going to be using as my new baseline, as my new reference on this YouTube channel. I'm not gonna hold you here for a 10 minute video just to tell you what it is. It's the THX AAA 789, this baby right here. Uh, this badass of an amplifier is uh, pretty much, ever since I heard it, kind of been the golden standard. Uh, I think the price is right. Uh, I like the build and the form factor. It's small and compact compared to the NFV 1M that I had before. Um, it measures super well, so I, I don't get yelled at for the measurement or from the measurement community. And honestly, as much as I can, I really do like to practice what I preach in terms of recommending something that I will then end up using. Like, that's why I like using the 1990 so much is because when I reviewed it, it was like, okay, if you do any form of professional work, this is one of the best headphones that you can get. And I still believe that to today, and I use it for uh, not only comparisons, um, but my personal listening and my professional work, even though I'm not like a professional professional, but I do you know, want to make sure my levels are correct uh, for my videos, and that's a big part of what I do. I try and practice what I preach there. I have a couple other amplifiers here that uh, this is mine as well for the time being. This is actually Z's. Thanks again, Z, for sending this out. Uh, he kind of sent this out to hold me over from the NFB because I thought it was going to sell it months ago, but it just took, well, honestly, I was kind of regretting uh, not wanting to sell it, rather. And uh, so because of that, I was taking forever to actually do it, but eventually got around to it. The topping DX7S here is also mine. Um, they sent out their replacement. Thank you again, Topping, for being really cool about that, that unit that was broken. Um, I super appreciate it. So a huge shout out to Topping. Um, I am keeping actually both of these. These are going to be a stack because the DX7S is uh, technically, it's a much better DAC than it is an amplifier. And I do actually have a channel policy not to actually review DACs. I review amplifiers, I review headphones, and amp DAC combos like this, I would basically review the amplifier portion with the DAC being kind of an honorable mention aspect. Um, just personal channel policy. But initially I was kind of thinking about using this as reference. Uh, the build quality is absolutely insane. Um, and it has a strong enough output for most headphones. So according to uh, Mastrop's website at 32 ohms, it'll point out 0.3 of a watt out of the single ended and then out of the balance, it'll put about 0.5 of a watt. So even though it's very clean and it, I know people are like, oh, it has a high impedance. Yeah, I get it, whatever. Uh, but it, it, it does sound very, very clean. It's just not very powerful. So for an amplifier DAC, it's not a bad option. I, I do enjoy it if you don't require like a ton of power, but I think kind of as a reviewer and anything that I might get in the future, I wanna make sure that power is not an issue. So I did use the Jotunheim for a while and I really do like the Jotunheim. Uh, I give it a little bit of shit. <laughs> get it? Uh, sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> I do give it a little bit of shit because I, I don't think it's like a perfect amplifier. Um, I, I don't think any amplifier here or anything that I've tried has been a perfect amplifier. I think this is probably the closest to a perfect amplifier considering all the factors being, you know, price, measurements, and how much I actually enjoy using it. Now, the Aeon was also another option because I actually really, really, really like the the sound characteristics of this. And I'll talk more about this in the full review, which is coming soon. But for whatever reason, what this Aeon is so good at is like placement of, like, it's hard to explain. So the sounds that are coming out of this for some reason seem to be placed with like a lot of authority. And it's just like, a, it's not like a speed characteristic. It's like a, uh, everything just sounds a little bit bolder on the Aeon. Now, I don't know if this is necessarily accurate or what would cause this. I have no idea. It's just kind of a characteristic that I really noticed like switching from amp to amp to amp back to the Aeon. It was just like, wow, these, it sounds like, it's like very hearty sounding. It's very cool. Uh, it does bring up a question though, that that it's hard for me to have like a bird's eye perspective, right? I, I don't have a 30,000 foot view of this situation because I'm in it. In your opinion, as a viewer, what do you think the importance of the reviewer's year is? Is it super important to you or does it not seem to change your opinion about what they do? Or is it something that I kind of just have built up in my head to think that, okay, it's important to everybody, but it's in actuality not. 
Like I assume you need decent gear. Like if you, if I was running it out of an iPhone output, like it'd probably be like, okay, you're probably not the best judge. But with semi-decent gear, like if it was just this or just the Jotunheim or just the THX or a dark voice, which I, I know tubes, but uh, just for example, or like even a full of two, like would you guys have a massive problem with that or does it not really matter? And I'm just personally curious. I'm not changing anything about my, my style or anything that I'm gonna compare off of or uh, reference off of. I'm just personally curious. All right, uh, that's gonna wrap it up. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Josh, signing off.